Let's watch the credits roll. Wow, I can't believe how fast this LP went, but I guess it was just, you know, all the stuff that I ended up cutting out of the game and everything like that. And, well, I'll get to that, viewers, but now let's take a look back on our experience here. Uh, for the graphics of the game, I th well, anyone who doesn't give it a 10 out of 10 is lying through their teeth. I mean, obviously, the graphics are amazing, and I was an HD cynic, you know, I didn't believe, like, oh, well, HD, how much better could it be than standard definition, you know? I was just, you know, an old fogey stuck in my old ways or whatever, but honestly, this game converted me from HD. I mean, oh, I've never seen HD like this. It was just beautiful and everything. It was so much better than playing the game on an ordinary CRT. I love the 3D camera rotation. That's something that's becoming more and more important to me in uh, modern graphics nowadays. The graphics were vibrant and colorful, and there's lots of variety to everything. I loved it. For the music, I'd give it an 8 out of 10. Uh, don't have Umatsu, and it certainly was missed there. A little jazzy, though. I like. I kind of like that. Uh, obviously, Fighting Fate and Born Anew were my favorite tracks from the game, but really, for the most part, uh, the, the music just didn't get me emotional or anything like that, so that's why I don't give it a higher score, really. I mean, it didn't make me, other than the two tracks I mentioned there, you know, it didn't really get me excited or or sad, or anything like that, you know? So, eh, it was good. Better than average, but not great. At least they didn't make it J-pop or anything like that. Uh, for the voice acting, I'd give it a 9 out of 10. I really like the voice acting. I mean, I like how they reanimated the lips to sync it up with it and everything like that. And it was, well, as believable as you could make it, given the script for the game. Uh, the only thing I would say with voice acting, or cutscenes and everything like that, don't use it to discuss mundane things, you know? Save the voice acting and the cutscenes for really major scenes in the game, you know? Speaking of which, for the plot and character development, oh yes. I'm feeling generous today. I'll give it a 7 out of 10. Uh, so, I'd say it's pretty average, to be honest. I mean, the things that I didn't really like about it was that there really wasn't any villain until chapter 9, like 15, 20 hours into the game. I mean, that's just way too long to introduce any kind of villain. I mean, sure, you have supposedly Psycom in the Sanctum, but you have to have a single antagonist as a villain. You don't have to even be the villain, just a villain, like Darth Vader or someone. I mean, Rush doesn't count, really. I mean, he, he was there for like, what, five minutes, you know? So, I mean... You know, and I, early in the game, I think there really needed to be a lot more objectives, you know? It was just, you were walking from point A to point B. No, that, that's not an objective, you know? Or, we're going to go to Eden. Okay, how are we going to do that? Beyond walking from point A to point B, you know? There was just almost no interaction for, like, the first ten chapters in the game. Even the whole game, really. Even when it opened up, there really just wasn't any interaction with that. I mean... The complaints about the game are not with its linearity, you know, it's just, there's just no interaction with it. It was an interactive movie, and, well, if they wanted to make a movie, well, then they should have done that, you know, not an interactive movie like this. So. I mean, the characters were good, though. I liked the characters. Most of them were, you know, Saz was pretty funny like that. Uh, they didn't always get along, so that was nice. Um, I didn't really care for the data log, I, I mean, it was nice as a memo feature, but I don't think it should really have been a replacement for quality NPCs and backstory to the game. So, for the battle mechanics, I'd give them a 10 out of 10. I thought they were perfectly balanced. Uh, I, I don't care if you can't control other party members, because you got plenty to worry about during battles there. Uh, all the classes and nearly all the abilities were useful in the game. Maybe make Eidolons and Synergist more useful. Uh, I thought the game was really challenging, but never unfairly so. So, you know, it was nice. Nice balance there. Uh, I love that they actually thought about making tanking useful. Um, but, you know, I, I really... I don't care for the character growth system. I wish they used tanking a little more, but it was nice that they were at least thinking about it. Uh, the Crystarium... Eh, I... It, 
it was okay, you know? I mean, at least it wasn't as too open-ended, but it was like, kind of like, why bother? Why not just make it automatic, you know? So overall, I'd give the game a 8 out of 10. You know, I wouldn't say it's a system seller. I wouldn't buy a PS3 or an Xbox 360 just for this. But nowadays, I mean, you can get a new copy for 40 bucks, you know? I mean, you know, it's fine like that, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think that's worth the money. I'd say the only things I would really say about the game are that, you know, there's too much emphasis about the, on the story and the combat. I mean, look at how much I edited out. You know, I'm really surprised at how much I cut out as a result of all that, you know? Um, let's see. Yeah, I mean, and then, like, at, when they got to Grand Pulse, there was too much emphasis on the exploration, you know? I mean, that's one thing I loved about the Super Nintendo era was that it had a perfect balance between the two, or even the PlayStation era, you know? Yeah, you had a lot of story, but, you, you know, it balanced that between the combat and the exploration, and it never got so much where you really lost track of what was going on. Now, a lot of people have been asking me about the sequel, Final Fantasy XIII 2. Um, the only things I could really say to improve would be the music and the plot. I mean, the music, I mean, how can you say to improve the music? I mean, I don't know, maybe get Yoko Shimamura. I mean, she did a really nice job on Radiant Historia there. Um, I mean, get Umatsu back, but I mean, I uh, that that's going to happen. Uh, let's see. Maybe, well, here's what I would say. As far as the plot goes, introduce character motivation early and continually advance the plot with clear objectives, like Radiant Historia did, you know? Introduce some villain early in the plot. If not the real villain, if you want to do like, here's the bad guy, but then the real bad guy, okay? But introduce something early, you know, something, someone that, you know, you really want to hate, like a Kefka or something like that. Uh, I would say don't use the data log to elaborate on the plot. I mean, I heard they had so much content they put in the, they wrote for the game, but they could have literally made another game. Well, then don't write that, you know? Just, you know, put in what what you can and you know don't leave things out that like anima was the uh the foul sea of erba you know i mean some critical details or like etro i never knew about etro until i read the data log and i would say it's a side quest use that to expand on the backstory you know don't just make them like boss kill quests with useless rewards almost and don't overuse the cutscenes. I mean, does anyone like that? Does anyone buy a game? Like on uh, Xenosaga 3, I was looking at the case at my brother's place. And it says, like, over eight hours of cutscenes. Like, wow, this has a lot of cutscenes. I gotta buy this game. I mean, does anyone buy a game because of that? I mean, I'm not saying it necessarily detracts from the game. But I don't think anyone buys a game because it has a lot of cutscenes, you know? But anyway, well... That's all for Let's Play Final Fantasy XIII. I hope you've enjoyed this Let's Play. So far, this isn't over yet, viewers. We've still got post-game content. Uh, nothing is really exclusive to the post-game, except the Stage 10 Crystarium, but it makes some of the remaining missions that I haven't done a lot easier. Not to mention farming components like Dark Matters and Trapezohedrons and everything like that. So yeah, we've still got a long way to go, viewers. It's totally not over yet. So first things first, let's save our post-game file there. So that way I can use that. You load it up and you'll essentially start at the last save point. You can go back to Pulse, do all the remaining missions that I haven't done up to now. And I'll make some bonus episodes for that and maybe go over some farming methods for the components that I was telling you about. I'm not going to get every single trophy, but, well, I'll at least show you how you can do it. So you can do it for yourselves if you really want to. This is H.C. Bailey signing off. Have a good day.